All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Thursday night stream. Um, guess we are up and ready to go. Um, okay. So I think we're just going to get started. We've got a few people that wanted to get on. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, start going over some of the lecture notes, um, starting with uh, Friday, Friday, Monday. Tomorrow's Friday. OK, so I'm just going to get my screen together. Okay, so let's um, let's get some lecture notes up. Okay, uh, so ba -ba 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 -ba. let's go full screen. Okay, so. Can be hello Joshua. Ariane, what's up? Yeah, hey, uh read Ariane and Josh. Go ahead and read. Okay, Josh, you good. Ariane, send me your um send me your email real quick. Um I am I was having some technical issues with sending out invitations. So hello Desol. Desol, do the same thing. You can either email it to me or um, post it. I'm, I'm having issues. Arena, what's up, girl? Yo, Corbin. Hey, guys, if you were wanting to hop on the stream, um, I need you to send me your email because I was having some uh, some technical if issues. I think you just saw. What's up, Mozam? Hey, send me your email address, bud, and I can get you uh, get you into the stream. Let's stop sharing. You guys can just look at me for a second. Um, okay. Marina, can you uh, can you say something or can you hear me? All right, what's up, girl? Jacob, thank you for the kissy face. I don't I don't know what that's all about, but I appreciate it all the same. Okay, Kier, thank you, bud. Okay, guys. Um, so, what? Uh, Marina, you popped in first. What do you want? What do you? Uh, what were you wanting to talk about? Aria, and you're in. Good. Marina, did you have a specific question you wanted to ask? Ooh, I cannot hear a word you are saying. Try that again. Marina, I can't hear you. <laughs> Shout. <laughs> Loud and proud, girl. Loud and proud. Or if you want, if you're, if you want, you can put it in the group chat over here. Question here. Over to the side if you're having trouble. Um, if your your microphone might might not be all that great. So. Yes, uh, Josh. Somatic sensory strip or the motor strip. Uh, uh, the homunculus is just a, like a, a way of explaining, better explaining the somatic strip and the motor strip. So, um, somatic sensory and the motor strip are both fair game. So, okay. hello. Hello. Yes. Could you go over like the neurotransmitters and like the neuron the Thing, like the neurotransmitters going through the neurons. Okay, so, so you're talking. 
you're just talking about the process of like um, of uh, neurons sending a message and the what like the neurotransmitters do sure. like sure. their functions I can do that uh, Sam, uh, Sam I just got yours I uh, just sent you a, a link okay so let's let's look at the neurons let me get this bigger for you guys to see okay um, okay so simply put looking at the uh, the shape of the the neuron you got your dendrites your soma axon myelin sheath and the terminal buttons okay so the entire like action potent potential concept is just talking about it moving through um, uh, through the neuron and what I want I'm gonna pull up that graph one more time for you guys um, and then share screen okay um, okay so coming back to this uh, to this screen here when we are looking at um, at that process. Okay, so to start with, uh, to begin, where does our um, where is our neuron sitting at this resting membrane potential? Okay, so all that's saying is, okay, we have a neuron. It's ready to send a message. It's ready to do its job. So it sits down here at this negative seven. Was I just muted there for a minute? Yeah, I accidentally muted you. Don't do that. Uh, Simon, this new email address you just gave me did not... Um, oh, there it is. Okay, I got it. Okay, all right. So uh, going back to this uh, action potential. Okay, so it's sitting here at this resting potential. And basically what is happening is you have other neurotransmitters that are hitting that that new neuron. If you remember, when we go back down to these, uh, let me get you a better picture. Um, no breathing. Hello. Who just who just popped in? Dasal, what's up, brother? Don't breathe into the mic. Okay, so you see here, you have these um, the vesicles with the neurotransmitters, and when they go across, specifically the excitatory neurotransmitters, and they attach to this new dendrite. That is that process of the um, energy Go level going up. Simon, what's up? Neurotransmitters, and they attach to this new dendrite. That is that process of the um, energy Go level going up. Simon, what's up? Simon, you're going to want to mute your, uh, the YouTube video that you're watching. You want to mute that. Yes, mute that, and then uh, and then you can come back in. Okay. So. Um, and so that's that. So, um, all right, you hearing me on this one? So that's those ex excitatory neuro neurotransmitters pushing that that up. And so, once it hits this threshold, that is the minimum level of stimulation. That is, uh, Simon, I'm gonna need you to like stop. Yeah, cause yeah, there we go. Okay, thank you. That's all. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, as these once this uh, threshold is hit, we have that action potential. Remember, we're talking about all or nothing with these. So, if it goes like halfway, we're not going to have an action potential. If we get an action potential really, really quickly, we're not going to have a super action potential. It's all just going to be the same. Okay. And this is just the message being sent across. Once that message is sent across, we come back down, we fall into this uh, resting period we call the refractory period, and we just kind of chill out for a little bit until we get back to this resting potential. Okay, so this is all just a message coming through the neuron. Okay, so then when we go in and we start talking about these uh, different uh, neurotransmitters, let me pull up the... Um, the list of neurotransmitters. Is there 
Uh, okay, so uh, start with this. Arian, did that make sense? Are you good with that explanation? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, okay. I could just talk about the neurotransmitters, but I, I mean, what like did you have a like specific one that you weren't sure about? I mean, they're all pretty cut and dry. I mean, they're just this is what they are, this is what they do. Um, I mean, it literally just takes you like taking a minute and trying to. Uh, yes, corporate. Well, you your computer needs a functionality, uh, a microphone functionality. So if not, you can just type in the 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 group chat on the side. Um, but you're not even in the Hangouts. So okay. Um, so is there any one of these that you didn't really understand? I mean, these do a pretty good job of explaining um, what their function is and what they do. I was exactly like, what does the acetylcholine do? Like, it talks about, like, learning and stuff, but what exact, like, because it's kind of, I yeah, really it's, it's, yeah, it's broad, but that's fine. I mean, that's like, that's it. I mean, you, you like, we don't, we don't need to get down into the, the, the area of, like, okay, exactly how does it help with acetylcholine? That's for, like, much higher level uh, psychology. You really just need to know. That's what it does. And endorphins, it helps uh, release during exercise. It kind of makes you feel good um, uh, uh, you know, about doing exercise and stuff like that. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of just like, here's a bunch of stuff that you just need to know. Is this an excitatory? Is this an inhibitory? And it does this or this. Okay. Yeah, that so. makes sense. Thank you. Okay, yep. So there we go. Um, Yes, Corbin, I can send. Corbin, I thought I sent you a link. Okay. Okay. Um, Arena, did you, were you able to find, uh, I'm still having trouble hearing you, but can you, were you able to, can you send me a question in the, the group chat? Um, we don't need to know anything about polarization of the neuron. No, uh, Kira, you do not need to know anything about the polarization of the neuron. That's, um, that's a little higher level stuff. Uh, Peyton, do we need to know the deficit and surplus effects of the neurotransmitters? Um, you do not need to know them for the FRQ, uh, but they are fair game on the test. Um, I don't think... Uh, uh, yes, and there's one question on the quiz about it. There's one question on the quiz. So yes, Peyton, you do need to know. Yes, Peyton. Yes, Rishi, we do need to know the deficit or surplus. Yep, 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 yep. Was Javier? We talked about this in class. Javier, uh, the neuro, it's about neurotransmitter function. Transmitter functions. Okay. Oh, this one. Okay, there we go. That's what I meant to do. Okay, Dissol, did you have a question, bud? Okay, Dasal and Arena, if you guys have a question, throw it oh, at me. Uh, what okay. does the FRQ look like? Like, I know it's about the neurotransmitters, but like, okay, how do you structure the FRQ? Well, do you remember what we talked about last week, and how most of those about how most of them are structured? Do you remember that, Dasal, or no? Basically, no, I don't really okay. remember. That's exactly. fine. Uh, hey, can you put your video on mute in the background? I can. I can hear myself talking. Um, uh, basically, all it's going to be is there is a scenario, and then we're going to have like different kinds of. Yes, Jacob's got it. Yeah, there's going to be um, a scenario. I'm going to have you talk about a specific neurotransmitter, and then I'm going to have you apply that neurotransmitter to the situation. So you're going to need to define the neurotransmitter and then apply it to whatever situation is happening. So tomorrow you guys will be doing a full, um, like a full FRQ, but like you're only going to have like one term to define. So that's what it'll look like tomorrow. Okay, sound good? 
Okay. So let's uh, let's move back and uh, let's go back to the lecture notes. Um, once again, if you guys have any questions, uh, you just throw it at me. So FRQ should be super short. No, 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 no. Uh, not super short. Um, it'll be, I mean, because remember, definition, two to three sentences, and then the um, application is another like two to four sentences, more leaning towards three to four sentences. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you have enough info uh, info there. So um, can you go over deficit and surplus? Uh, I can, Saima. Um, the thing is, is that you're, okay. Okay, yeah, let me let me come back. Let me come come over that or get to that. Oh, Simon, you're talking about the deficit uh, and surplus of neurotransmitters, correct? Okay. What is this doing? Okay. Okay, so this might have been a good little tool. Okay, so I wanted to pull up uh, something so that you can look at look at it very simply. So I'm gonna stop this. So like, that's a good question, and let's share this screen uh, here. Share. Okay. So do 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 do. Scrub a little bit. Okay, so here we have uh, here we have the, the whole list. You have acetylcholine, you have dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, GABA, uh, endorphins, and glutamate. And this is just your list right here. Okay, so ACH, Alzheimer's, surplus, uh, severe muscle spasm. I mean, you could you could just read off this list. So I'm just going to leave this up here uh, and instead of me just droning droning on about it. Um, that's I mean that's your list right there. So um, I know that that wasn't fully spanned out is that close are you guys close enough can you read can you see that um i don't know if that's too far away if it's too far away i can le read off the list um we go over the applications of the frq since we did not do it last week go over the application rishi what do you mean can you uh, clarify your question? I don't know what you mean. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm sorry, Risha. Yes, we definitely will. We will, um, because it's such a short FRQ, we don't need a full 25 minutes to do it. So I will like hash out exactly what, uh, what I'm looking for. Uh, yes, Dassault, uh, different types of uh, technology is fair game. Uh, are we supposed to give examples like from our own on the FRQ? Yes, Serena, yes. Uh, ooh, hold on. So Arena just asked a really good question. Um, so basically, when uh, whenever you are given an example, or, or whenever you are giving an example, especially in your definition, you can give your own life example. And I, I always uh, encourage that because that's the easiest for you to remember. So if you have a real life example of uh, maybe uh, you're talking about uh, uh, just for this example, acetylcholine ha deals with Alzheimer's disease, and you can talk. Uh, you can very quickly uh, bring up like oh, my grandfather has Alzheimer's disease, and when we went to the doctor, he had a, a really low amount of acetylcholine. That's that's one of the big reasons for it. So, um, however, when you are applying that to the situation at hand, you know if they're like, well, Joe Schmo over here has this issue, and then you're talking about your grandfather. That's that's not applying the situation. So, Irina, you want to make sure that when you're applying the situation, yes, you are very specifically talking about um, the scenario that they're they're doing. Um, okay. So, uh, Irina, if that uh, answers your question, give me like a little thumbs up in the group chat so I know you're good. Okay, um, Corbin, you're not getting the emails. Do we need to know the hormones or just the glands that secrete them? Um, you need to know both. You need to know both, Corbin. So, um, it's all like, yeah, you need to all know all of it. 
So there you go. Uh, Cassie, we will also need to know the nor adrenaline and the adrenaline transmitters as well. Uh, does that not have that up there? It does not. Um, yeah. Ooh. Uh, Corbin, they are making me hold your message for review. You said that sucks. I'm going to hide that, Corbin. That was just just too too much. Okay. Um, no, I don't. See, the thing is, is like, nor, uh, Cassie, going back to your nor adrenaline and your adrenaline question, like, it's such an awkward, like, discussion because nor adrenaline is like, like, adrenaline is also a hormone, but it's also a nor, nor, uh, neurotransmitter. And so it's just kind of awkward, like, having both of them up. So I really doubt the AP will, the AP exam will ask a question on it. So I'm not going to ask a question on it. So, uh, like, specifically, like, the, the up, the having too much or too little. So I think you can kind of just skip that noradrenaline uh, and adrenaline stuff, uh, if that makes sense, uh, because it's just it's kind of it's kind of confusing all in an, all by itself. And so I don't think the APs or the uh, College Board is interested in asking questions like that. So um, so yeah, okay. Um, you guys, give me some. Thumbs up. Do we need this uh, neurotransmitters section still, or can I move on to other stuff? What do you guys think? Uh, hit me in the chat. What do you guys? Do you guys want me to move on and talk about um, uh, the different parts of the neuron and move on to other stuff, or do you want this picture still up? I'll give you guys a minute to catch up to this. Move on. Rishi wants to move on. Please move on. Mozam's getting bored. I don't know how to put a thumbs up and thumbs down. Cassie, I don't know either. No, there's like a little emoji thing on the side. Oh, you have to go look for stuff. I don't know. I don't know. This isn't This isn't my iPhone. Okay, parts of the brain. Endocrine system. Okay. Can you post the link to that Quizlet? I can post the link. That is a great question. I can't post that link. Um... Give me like two seconds. Let me find it. Yeah. Okay. There's the uh, that is the link link to um, uh, neurotrans uh, deficits and too much whatever. Actually, there you go. Corbin, I'm deleting your post, so remove so that my two things are like put together. Okay, 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 okay. So let's go. Let's quickly go to the endocrine system. Do 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 do. Let's go. Stop that. All right, guys. Hope this is helpful. I I sometimes feel like this is like crazy me putting all this together and it's not like smooth but if you guys bear with me I think this will be helpful okie dokie uh, we're gonna start with the parts of the brain yes uh, can we go over yes we will go, definitely go okay I have like 15 people wanting to do parts of the brain let's do parts of the brain first and then we'll go over um, the endocrine system how's that we will get there. Okay, uh, cool. Uh, you guys remember all these. Make sure if you guys have questions about these, um, you can ask. I'm not going to ask about fMRI or MEGs. I know we did not get to those, but um, they're in the notes section. They're, I mean, they're simple. So, uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, can we go over? Okay. Parts of the brain, here we go. All right, let's do this, boys and girls. Okay, so... Um, to begin with, we have. Let's kind of lower this down a little bit, make this bigger. Okay. Uh, so, something that we like really just kind of breezed over when we were looking at 
uh, when we talked about parts of the brain today was this concept of old brain versus the limbic system versus the cerebral cortex. Okay, so we have, uh, if you can see in this picture, we have three shades of color. Okay, we have this, what's called the reptilian brain or the old brain, we have the limbic system, and then we have this neocortex or the cerebral cortex up here. Now, the thing that I want to, uh, to kind of go over um, is that like, this is, this is what separates us from other animals, okay? So if you, if you think about reptiles and things like that, people who own like snakes and fish and uh, lizards or whatever, do those things like give any sort of emotion? No, they just like live and eat and poop and that's it. That's, that's their like life. That's why you can have a lizard and you can keep them in a cage and just feed them food every once in a while and they're good. I mean, I don't know why you would have a pet like that. That doesn't make any sense. But like that, so all of this stuff here, this is just keeping you alive. You have your cerebellum here that we've talked about. You have your brain stem and your medulla and your pons and your um, uh, and your reticular formation. So this stuff, reptilian brain, old brain, it just keeps you alive. It's the first stuff that you develop as um, a baby in your mother's womb. It's just keeping you alive. As we move up, we get higher, like, better and better like a, a better and better brain so you get into this like limbic system area and you're running into uh things that deal with our emotion and you have um creatures like like dogs like my dog teddy he has a limbic system he has emotions when he uh is not paid enough attention to like i've been doing since i've gotten on the stream come here teddy here we'll give you it you we'll give you all this attention with other people okay he has emotions that need to be satiated like he feels love and you know attention all that like he needs that attention so for him his brain is just more advanced than a, a snake is like you're not gonna have a snake wanting to cuddle with you you're gonna have a snake that is you know just wants to eat you it's kind of like cats cats you know Cats are still down in this uh, reptilian brain. They're not, they, they don't have emotions. They're just evil. So after that, um, yes, Teddy is cute. Thank you. He's also been, uh, he's been pesky today. He keeps wanting, keeps wanting attention. Okay. So then we have the cerebral cortex up here. And guys, this is like other mammals are going to have, and other animals are going to have this, this, this uh, neocortex, the cerebral cortex, but mostly it's just like helping them with their vision, helping them with their sense of touch. For us, especially when we get into that frontal lobe, that's separating us from the animals. That's like who we really are, like that ability to process information, to make judgment calls, and all of this stuff is really like big time. Okay, so that's kind of like this, this is part of like why that lecture, yes, you know, the, the stuff that I breezed over yesterday, we, we kind of go delve a little bit deeper so um let's go over the parts okay so once again we're looking at uh the brainstem the pons the medulla guys there's more stuff in here like there's there's like little itty bitty parts that do very itty bitty specific things um, but what you need to know here is that this is what keeps you alive okay now you do you are going to want to want to know some of the differences i try not to nitpick with you guys um, and ask you like, okay, what's the difference between the medulla and the pons? Because it is, it's just kind of like, uh, like knowing all the, these like very specific things. So if we're looking at the brainstem is responsible for automatic survival functions. Okay. Regulation of cardiac and respiratory functions, your consciousness, the sleep cycle. Okay. This is all brainstem medulla oblongata. This is cardiac. I don't know. It's not fixed. Uh, cardiac respiratory. So look, cardiac, uh, whereas cardiac, like these, these do overlap respiratory vomiting, vomiting. It's always weird. This like, this is in charge of you vomiting, uh, vasome vasometer centers deal with, uh, autonomic involuntary functions such as breathing, heart rate. Ooh, I just flipped that around. Okay. So all this stuff, all just keeping us alive. Pons, respiration, look more respiration. We got all these things overlapping. So all this stuff overlaps. It keeps you alive. Just keep that in mind. I'm not going to be like, okay, what is the job of the brainstem and then have the medulla and the pons like right in the middle of it. So um, just keep that in mind. Okay. Cool. 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 I know I just talked at like a million miles an hour, but there we go. Okay. Um, let's 
come back. OK, so that's the brainstem. Keeps you alive, first thing that you're developed and, and born with. OK, uh, here we go. Let's go to the thalamus. OK, so thalamus, as I said, uh, like, I don't know. I don't like the definition that I had uh, on, the, on the worksheet. I just felt like it didn't really tell you much. OK, so here, brain sensory switchboard. OK, it's uh, on top of the brain stem. OK, so this is one of the things that is developed very early on as you are as you are developing, as the brain begins to communicate with itself, sends these sensory uh, sensory messages. Your brain senses so much information. We're going to talk about this next week, about how you just have millions and millions of things that you sense at, like every day. Think about sitting in the classroom where you have uh, people that are like making uh, noises with their pen or whatever and then you have the teacher talking and then you have all the different colors and lights around you you have the feelings of your clothes on you and all that stuff like there's so much sensory information and all of this is getting batted around in this area and going to different parts of your brain and the thalamus is at the center just kind of like transporting them back and forth uh, so big deal like it does does lots of lots of awesome stuff okay um uh yep so there we go Boop. uh is the location of everything on the quiz uh excellent question here not a chance i am not going to be like here's a picture of the brain what where's the thalamus or something like that no um the closest i ever came uh or i might ever do is give you like a real simple tell me where the lobes of the brain are um I, I, it's possible I'll do that, and that's like, I don't know, I, I feel like I'm just passing points to you, because occipital, temporal, parietal, frontal, um, and I just don't, I don't feel like that's like really doing anything. So, so here to your question, no. Okay, so, um, okay, so that's the thalamus, okay? So after the thalamus, we are going to have uh, the cerebellum, okay? Now, when we are looking at the cerebellum, Okay, as it says, it's the little brain, okay, attached to the rear of the brain stem, so on that bottom part of the brain stem, okay, and its main function is coordinating voluntary movements, okay. So, uh, once again, when we were talking uh, today about, you know, dancers or whatever, people that are like sports players or dancers, like theirs, their cerebellums are, are super hardwired. Like, you think of like, professional um like a bit professional baseball player that guy's cerebellum is probably like supercharged with neurons um as the you know that per, you know that person he pitches you know you know what a hundred plus pitches every time he plays a game like it's just it's so automatic for that person to do that um, and so that's all being taken care of by the cerebellum so the more you do some sort of voluntary action some for, sort of voluntary movement that's your cerebellum taking over the more comfortable you get with it the less you have to think about it think about any action that you have to do riding a bike or, like when you first rode a bike it took a lot of your your mental power to like stay on the bike stay balanced do whatever and then now the cerebellum's just like okay well yeah this is I, I've, I've got control of this so you have a lot of like the frontal and the parietal lobe early on like dealing with the all of these movements and trying to process it out and then once that once that's mastered or you've got it under control, your cerebellum just takes over. So, and it just, you know, does its thing. Okay. Whoop. Okay. So it controls my muscle memory. Yes, to all. Yes. In a very real sense. Okay. So reticular formation. Uh, this looks better in slideshow show format when you can see everything. So let me just. Okay. Reticular formation. Once again. We are just looking at um, at the part of the brain, that back part that it like flattens itself onto the um, uh, what am I thinking? The brainstem, okay. And this is just alertness. This is just keeping us um, plays a central role in states of consciousness, like alertness and sleep. Boom, done, simple. That's it. Once we once again, damage could lead to coma and death if it's bad enough, and constant fatigue. So. Yep, that's the that's a reticular formation. Okay, still talking about the old brain. So all of these things 
all of these things sit inside the, the, the old brain. So brainstem, pons, medulla, thalamus, um, cerebellum, reticular formation. And, and well, eh, sorry, the thalamus is more in the limbic system, but like it's so, the thalamus is like sitting up here on top in this limbic system, but it's so imperative to everything. And it's like, it comes in so early that it's like, I don't know. I, don't worry about it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to quiz you on it, but it, it works for both ways. Okay. 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 So now let's go to the limbic system. Okay. Limbic system. Once again, we're just, the brain is becoming more and more advanced. Um, you first start to deal with, uh, issues of like emotion, um, inside the limbic system. So this is, this is going to be the part that's no longer like, okay, we're just surviving. We, you know, we have, um, what's it called? Uh, we have, um, emotions we feel things or whatever so this is this is where teddy my dog this is where he is okay so real simple amygdala okay that said two lima bean neural clusters sitting on top of the hippocampus okay deals specifically with uh fear and uh, aggression does a little bit with me memory consolidation but these are the two emotions that you're really hitting is this idea of fear and aggression um and uh, we could do a lot of stuff with that. And, you know, you got this little stupid picture of a cat, but you could literally just like, you can have people who have damage to these areas in the amygdala or whatever, and are just super violent all the time or super fearful all the time um, because they're, because it's all like out of whack and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, there's your amygdala. Okay. Um, okay. Hypothalamus. Uh, so, um, hypothalamus, remember hypothalamus does like a zillion things. Uh, first it's the brain of the endocrine and endocrine system. So it's in charge of that. Um, it's also helping us with these little maintenance, like what I call maintenance activities, eating, drinking, keeping your body temperature. Um, and then it's also linked to the, to emotion specifically reward. So I didn't really talk about this much, uh, except for in fourth period, but, um, very specifically, like, so you see in this, this picture, and let me, let me make this picture bigger, okay? You have this, um, uh, you have this rat here, and uh, this rat is in what we call a Skinner box, and um, what he's doing here is we're, we're testing him. So this, like, little white thing with the, with the block is a probe, and that's stuck inside of his head, and specifically, it is touching... Uh, his hypothalamus. And so what can happen is we can send elect small, very small electrical charges to um, this mouse's brain. And what we're going to have happen is that is going to activate whatever part of the brain is there. So every time this mouse presses down on this lever, he's going to get a small jolt to his hypothalamus which is going to make him feel great. Have you ever been rewarded for something, done something really cool, someone gave you a pat, pat on the back and like, good job, you're awesome. Like, it feels awesome. And you're just like, woo, I'm the best, I'm the greatest. And so that's the feeling he feels every time he presses down on that lever. So he's gonna do it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. He's gonna keep going until, well, basically he's gonna do it until he dies. Uh, he's just, there's just no reason for him to stop. It feels great. So. The uh, the feeling of reward is uh, very very strong. Okay, cool cool cool. And guys, once again, uh, if you have a question, just throw it, just throw it at me. Um, so I guess this is just more lecture. So it's like electric drugs, but causes but it causes an obsession. Rishi, what do you mean? Like uh, I mean, here's the thing. Okay, so Rishi, like, okay, so basically, here's the question, Rishi. A answer me this. Could this happen to a human? If I put a little buzzer in your in your head, and every time you press this button, you would get the feeling of reward, would you do it until you died? And the answer is no, because you're a human being, and your brain is more 
uh, more developed than this mouse. Like you've got that frontal lobe, you know, development of planning and judgment. And you'd be like, oh, well, this feels great, but, you know, I need to have lunch. So I'm going to go make a sandwich and then I'm going to come back and, you know, I might do some more, but I'm going to go to sleep after that because, you know, I've got other things to do. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think after a while, really, the 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 feeling would actually probably just go away. Like it wouldn't – you'd become – um, numb to it all. Like it just wouldn't affect you the same way as, um, as it did before. So yeah, it's just an experiment though. We wouldn't do that, uh, to actual human beings cause that would be terrible. Okay. So let's move on from the hypothalamus pituitary gland. Simple. Uh, this pituitary gland is like when we talk about the hypothalamus and I'm like, Oh, the hypothalamus is the brain of the endocrine system. Well, it does that through the pituitary gland. So, um, uh, oh, so the mouse doesn't feel hunger or anything. Uh, no, Rishi, he feels hunger, but his desire for re reward is so much greater. Um, and so he's just like, yeah, technically I'm hungry, but like, dude, this button though, uh, got to get after that button. So, and he's just, and he's just going to go after that. So he's going to, yep. His desire for that reward is going to out outweigh his desire for food. So endocrine, uh, pituitary gland. Okay. So, okay. Got it. Sweet. Okay. Uh, as it says under the influence of the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus doesn't secrete like any hormones by in it on its own. It does. It like tells the pituitary gland to do that. Okay. So big thing for the pituitary gland going to regulate growth. Um, and it also is going to like send chemicals to the other glands in order to get them, to Alex, what are you what are you doing on here, Alex? Weird. Thank you. I, I miss you too, bud. Okay. Uh, but like th like that information is going to go out to the other glands of the um, uh, of the endocrine system, and like so, the pituitary gland is like it's like having a boss tell like a manager to go boss all the other. Uh, employees around. That's what the pituitary gland is to uh, in the endocrine system. Okay, uh, hippocampus, easy peasy, short term to long term memory. Uh, also does a little bit of spatial na navigation, but whatever. We're looking at this short term to long term memory. Simple, simple. Uh, that is that is the job there. Uh, okay, uh, so that is all. That's all the limbic system that we need to cover. There are more things in the limbic system. But we're really just covering this. That's 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 all we need for right now. Okay. So um, coming up to the cerebral cortex. Okay. So the intricate fabric of intricate connected neural cells. Like once again, when when we're talking about neural cells, we're talking about all those neurons, guys. Remember, everything that you do creates more and more neurons and more and more neural pathways. Okay. And that's you know that's what all this that's what all this mumbo jumbo is up here. The more you do stuff, the smart the, you know the more intelligent in that area you get or the better in that area that you get um so broken into four four places uh, i mean guys simple occipital lobe deals with vision okay boom uh temporal uh, well let's go back let me just real quick we'll talk about this more in sensation and perception next week but your eyes see the world in two dimensions like the the real job of like understanding what's going on in the world is this occipital lobe. Like your eyes literally see the world in two dimensions, sends that information back to the occipital lobe. It processes it in three dimensions and then sends it back to, and like, and that's how you know what's going on. Way to go occipital lobe. Uh, it, it does a lot and we rely on it a lot. Okay. Uh, next we have the temporal lobe. Like, like I said, there's a couple of things that it does, but major, major aspect is the hearing. That's, that's its main job. Okay. So, and if you remember with hemispheres, your right ear, if you hear something in your right ear, where's that information going to go? It's going to go to the left ear or excuse me, left temporal lobe. And that's where it's going to be processed. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> parietal lobe. Here we go. This is the back top half of the brain, and we're simply looking at uh, our sensation of touch. Once again, there's a couple other things, but our big thing is going to be our sensation of touch. Okay, uh, and then we have our frontal lobe. Okay, frontal lobe. Remember, this is uh, like the part of you that is still in development, and it's dealing with like judgment and um, 
it's dealing with um, what was wrong with my planning, um, certain like fi specifically like fine motor movements, uh, as we know earlier or uh, earlier from today with the Broca's area, it helps with uh, your muscle movements for speaking, all that jazz, frontal lobe, parietal, temporal, easy peasy. Okay, so make sure you know those. Okay, um, okay, so real quick, motor cortex and uh, sensory cortex, okay, motor cortex, it's just that front, that back part of the, um, of the frontal lobe, and it's just helping us, like the reason uh, we can manipulate things, like it's just more and more neurons packed into that area, doing more and more things, and the homunculus is just showing us like, oh, we can, we have a lot of dexterity with our hands, because we use it all the flipping time and uh, we don't have a lot of dexterity with our toes because we don't need to use our toes okay um, and that's going to be the same with the sensory uh, sensory functions okay you're gonna run into things that have a lot of um, a lot of a lot of sensation okay your fingers your face your lips um, a little bit on your feet but like your knees not a lot of sensation on your feet or on your knees okay um, okay, once again, when we're just looking at this association functions, just remember like that it's just there's so much more that the brain is doing. Um, you know, we, we talk about like, uh, oh, the frontal lobe does the four things. I mean, yes, but so, so much more. There's so much more to this. Um, if any of you ever go on to like really study the brain and what it does, you'll kind of look back on this class and be like, haha, we literally studied nothing uh, because there's just so much to what's going on. Um, but for our, for our tense and purposes, higher mental functions such as learning, remember, thinking, and speaking, and so much more. Okay. So that's what we're looking at there. Okay. Uh, specifically, when we are looking at some of these association functions, uh, the reason why I talk about like the Broca's area and the um, and the Wernicke's area. So if you go back, let me let me just show you real quick. Um, if you go to the outline for um, for this chapter. Okay, so one of the things that they're going to do, um, where are we? <sighs> Goodness gracious. Um, what, what am I looking for? Guys, what am I looking for? Predict, uh, I read it today, or blah, 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 blah. Okay, uh, right here. I'm sorry, I, I found it. Okay, so when they're asking about like okay so identified key contributors paul broca carl wernick um i don't know if i actually specified this in the lecture today but those those names ring a bell like wernick's area broca's area broca's area these are the two guys that that discovered it like uh, yeah so um so that's why i i bring it up because that is um well, that's why we talk about it because that's specifically um, one of the things that they want us to to bring up. So it seems kind of like random and out of nowhere, um, but that's what it is. Uh, so um, okay, so aphasia, as we know, impairment of the language uh, of any kind of language, uh, stutters, um, uh, people who have Tourette syndrome, all that's all that is an aphasia. So um, okay, so. Broca's area, Wernicke's area. Remember, Broca's area is in that frontal lobe, and so that's the controlling, like, how our mouth moves in order to speak. Uh, so, uh, so that's our Broca's area. Remember, with the Broca's aphasia, we had that poor guy that just couldn't say what he wanted to say. Uh, and then when we have the Wernicke's area, remember that's worse uh, than the Broca's aphasia, and this person cannot. Um, understand what's being said to him and also cannot uh, express when he wants to say it all just kind of comes out as mumbled I remember broke his area the guy like literally couldn't say anything he just ummed and who like ummed and hawed the entire time but the guy who's with weird aphasia he was talking I mean but it was, I mean it was just mumbles you couldn't understand what he was saying but he was saying stuff the entire time um, so um, so definitely a difference there uh, Corbin uh, when you said we needed to know hormones, did you mean all the ones from the pituitary gland too? No, no, 
know. I just know that the pituitary gland is uh, like uses chemicals in order to uses hormones to like uh, talk to the other ones. Um, and here, just real quickly, when we come down to like when we come down to hormones, like there are different types of hormones. Um, so when you're like looking at so hormones, chemical messengers mostly fan, manufactured in the the brokers was better than oh did i say otherwise i'm sorry josh i was kind of rolling through it i mean that's that's you misspelled it both times um but it, like they're both terrible uh wernix area uh wernix aphasia would technically be worse I, I don't know if i accidentally said it the other way but yes not being able to uh understand or express speech i think would be way worse than just not being able to move your mouth properly okay okay so real quick when we're coming back to here um this this goes deeper so we have like different types of hormones and when you go and you look up like what is a peptide or a protein or amino acid derivative like what do they do um Okay. Uh, give me, yeah. So, so that's, so like, so there's so much more Corbin when we're looking at this, uh, pituitary gland or whatever. So, um, so yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's go back real quick. Um, brain reorganization. We're just talking about plasticity, the brain's ability for it to change. Um, all, all that. No, Mozam, you do not need to know the details of those three hormones. Please no. I, I, yeah, no, you definitely do not. Um, yes, Kier, they are. Um, you, let me think. Uh, there's nothing on the, there's nothing on this quiz, Kier, but it, it, it is very, is super open for the test. Um, I don't think there's anything specifically on, on this quiz. Um, but test is super fair, fair game. Okay. Marinas, were you trying to say something? I, th I feel like I, I can almost hear you. An antagonist? What's that? What do you mean, like, what is an antagonist? Are you talking about, like... Oh... Oh, th that's dealing with neurotransmitters. No, Corbin, you don't need to know about that stuff. Yeah, like once again, we're like this is like when we're looking at like peptides and proteins and all that. Like, um, that's that's much deeper than we need to go uh, for for the test. From here, most whoa. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Joss from, I'm sorry. Yes. The reuptake and antagonists are, and agonists are, are coming from neurotransmitters. Look at the neurotransmitter section. It'll, it'll show you what it's talking about. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, Uh, yes, Abby, you will definitely need to know which of the neurotransmitters are inhibitory versus excitatory. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, Josh, ignore whatever that, whatever, whoever that was. So, okay. Um, okay, cool. Uh, okay, so, um, let's see. Uh, corpus callosum. Remember, just it's the it's the thing that set the band of neural fibers separates the two brain hemispheres. Okay, um, it allows us to send messages back and forth. Easy peasy. Okay. Um, uh, split brain. Uh, okay, split brain. Uh, guys, just remember a couple of these. This is really simple. Like you don't need to know like like too too much. Just know left brain language. Um, computation and logical reasoning, right hemisphere, spatial reasoning, face recognition, that's a big one, um, and music. 
Uh, so those are the those are the main things that you really need to worry about there. Um, and then let's see, Calvin tutorials. I got you, Calvin. I'm I'm sending you a link right now. Just coming in in time. Oh, whoops! We mean to do that. No, let's just do that. Um. Okay. Uh, and then we've got the endocrine system. Just know know the basics of all of uh, all of the different glands uh, and what they do. Um, just like like I said, I mean, you just need to know each of these. It's just a bunch of dictionary definition terms, and that that's generally how I'll be asked. Um, endocrine system versus exocrine. Endocrine's everything inside. Exocrine's all the stuff outside. Uh, what time does this live stream end? Uh, this live stream ends at nine. So nine, not around nine, Corbin. Yes, around nine. Okay. Um, cool. All right. That's that's it. Uh, so um, I think that's that's all the like lecture stuff. So what do you guys got? Do you have other questions or um, specific things that you need? Because otherwise we've hit I've hit all the stuff that is. Uh, uh, that that'll be on the quiz tomorrow. Um, uh, Calvin, you're in. Let me un. I can unmute. Well, you muted yourself. It's okay, Corbin. You good? Uh, You've already. Give me a second. Okay, Calvin. Just whenever you get whenever you got your question. All right. Um, let me look on, uh, let me hop on, let me hop on Schoology real quick. Let me see. Um, I don't need that anymore. Where's my Schoology stuff? No, no, it's gone. Okay, uh, we're in the notes. Does it say if a neurotransmitter is inhibitory? Uh, that's in that packet that I gave you. So the packet, uh, the mm, is it not in the notes? Oh. Um, uh, the packet that you're supposed to fill out. Um, that that's where it like is really where you're supposed to find. Um. Uh, that's where you're. That's where you'd find that information. Um, let me see if I can find you something for that real quick. Uh, do we need to know specific hormones? Um, uh, Peyton, you need to know exactly what. Um, not exactly. But you need. To, you need to know what the what this says. Like this chart, you need to have. You need to have down. So. Um, uh, so no, yeah. So no, not really. Uh, I mean, you need to know adrenal gland, you know, gives you adrenaline and stuff. So th they tell you a little bit. So whatever this this endocrine system picture says, that's really where I'm where I'm coming from. So you'll be good in that way. Okay, hold on, guys. I got a I got a bunch of I have a backup of questions. Okay, Peyton, you got that? You good? Okay, it's on the back. Neuron sign. Okay, Corbin, you got it. Um, yes, Kier, you got that. Thanks, Corbin. Okay, cool. Uh, I have it. It's on the sheet title. Okay, cool. You guys are so helpful. Okay, sweet. And I'm all, I'm all caught up. Okay. Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, I want to, I want to get on Schoology, see if there's anything else that I want to show you guys. Um, the crash course videos are great. Um, ooh. Oh, here we go. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let me, uh, let's do brain scenarios real quick. Uh, so you're going to run into, like, I'm going to throw these at you. Um, I'm going to throw questions like these at you a bunch, not only in this test, on this quiz, but on the test especially. Um, so you'll see stuff like this a lot. Okay. Um, um, there's a bunch of these. Uh, okay, so this is kind of like my here are some questions or whatever. 
Um, okay, uh, Grandma Mary had a stroke, which impaired her ability to speak fluently, although she can move all the necessary muscles. What is most likely location of her brain damage? What do you guys think? Throw it in the comments. Um... Uh, not, not the Wernix area to saw. That is not the muscles, necessary muscles. So it's not Wernix area. Is this talking about speaking? Whoop. Broca's area. Yes, Corbin. Broca's area is what we're talking about. Uh, okay. Say that one more time. Calvin, did you say something, brother? No, no. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, some of these, yeah, you're fine, Desol. Um, some of these ones, like the Prozac, works better, increasing the avail availability of what neurotransmitter. Um, I did not get this. Uh, I got this for online, so some of these are not like. Uh, things you have to worry about. Uh, after Martin's car accident, he had difficulty understanding what others were saying to him. He could speak, but he uh, said, "Well, since here's another one. This here, just all this is this is your Wernix area right here." Um, oh, here we go. Uh, Jeanette suffers from focal epilepsy seizures loca uh, localized in just one part of her brain. Her seizures are triggered extreme emotions, most often extreme fear followed by a rage response. What part of the brain is being affected? Um, that's a that's a good one right there. Um, what, do, what do we got for this one, guys? Number 19 was Jeanette. What, is, what part of the brain is uh, affected by Jeanette? For Jeanette? What do you mean, frontal lobe? Uh, no, not the frontal lobe. Uh, yes, the amygdala is what we're looking for. Amygdala. Now, the like very specifically when you're looking at like it's talking about two specific emotions. That's definitely the amygdala because it's rage and fear. And remember, amygdala is fight or flight. So very specifically. Um, Okay, so after falling through the ice on a local – amygdala is correct. Good work, guys. Uh, after falling through the ice on a local pond, Johnny was trapped under water, icy water for 10 minutes before rescued, blah, 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 blah. They were able to resuscitate his pulse and breathing, but he did not regain consciousness for days. Okay, so number 18, okay, regain consciousness. Disturbance of what, speci uh, disturbance of what specific part of Johnny's brain might have resulted in the inability for the brain to regulate normal alertness. What, what, what part are we talking about here? What part? Reticular formation. Very good. Okay. Excellent. Reticular formation is what we're looking for. Okay. Here's a big one. Number 17. Number 17. Margie suffered damage to part of the, the surface of her brain after being struck by a golf, co golf club let loose by an irate golfer. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, as a result, Margie has lost sensory awareness, sensory awareness of her left leg. Where is Margie's brain damaged? Be specific. This is very important. Okay. Margie has lost her sensory awareness in her left leg. So what part of her brain is damaged? Some big clues there. Very specifically, what part of her brain has been damaged? Big, big question here. That's not specific enough. There we go. Yes, somatosensory strip, right lobe, parietal. Um, Josh, you don't need to say parietal at the end. The somatosensory strip will do. So right somatosensory strip. Right hemisphere, parietal spot, looking for somatosensory strip. So somatosensory strip in the right hemisphere. That is specifically what we're looking for. Parietal, yeah, but Simon, that wouldn't be close enough. Um, but that's what we're looking for, very specific, okay? So um, that is going to do it for me. Unless you guys have a specific question before I go, um, we're going we're gonna to call it there. 
Um, so yeah. So I'll give you guys like a minute to throw me a question, but otherwise we are piecing out. Um, once again, these brain scenarios, they are online. Corbin, wait, I'm waiting. What do you want? Ah. No problem, Josh. Thanks for thanks for hopping on the stream. What time is it? Corbin, it's 9.05, brother. It's 9.05. It's around 9. Yes, it is technically around 9. And it's around 9 when we get done. Corbin, do you have a question? Or are you just being a bother? Good night, Alex. Were you on this entire time, Alex? Good night. Cameron, what guys, you're not in this class anymore. You don't I don't understand you two. That Cameron and Alex, you seriously not have anything better to do on a Thursday night than watch your old teacher's live stream? You're welcome, Simon. Thank you for getting on. You're welcome, Abby. Thank you for getting on. No, that's a that's a bit strong, Hannah. That's a bit strong. I'm being a bother. Good night. No, you're fine, Corbin. Good night. Thanks for the help. No problem. You guys are awesome. Thanks for getting on. Good luck with your quiz tomorrow. You're going to do great. Okay. Yes, Alex, it is Thursday. All right. I'm going to bed. So good night. Go away. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Calvin. Later, bud. And broadcast.